Hello, and welcome to this introductory presentation on the new OpenNMS topology map that we kindly refer to as STUI. For those of you that don't recognize me, I'm David Hustis, and I'm one of the founders and president of the OpenNMS group. STUI, or Semantic Topology User Interface, is what I'm quite proud to be showing you today. This presentation represents what amounts to almost exactly two years of work and several iterations of this exciting new technology. I have two primary goals for this presentation. The first of which is to get everyone finally introduced to STUI, and the other, which proved even more profound, is uh, to change the OpenNMS Group CEO's well-known opinion about maps from one of, I hate maps, to one of, I so love maps. Hey, before I begin the live demonstration, please allow me to take just a minute to talk about the general principles behind the new concepts on which STUI is built. We believe that our users will be more effective at network management tasks due to the powerful visualization cues and advanced query and action capabilities that are built into STUI. This, as opposed to simply staring at a set of massively complex force-directed graphs, which is your network, by the way, or otherwise working from a giant list of alerts, is how STUI empowers OpenNMS users to be more effective and in their network management roles. This design is similar in concept to what Google has been doing recently with search, where answers and knowledge graphs are presented as search results rather than just a ginormous list of links. Like any good design, form should follow function. When we started this project, I gave the development team one major objective, and that was to make it sexy. <laughs> when asked, I responded with something like, I want it to be sexy. I can't tell you what sexy is, but I'll know it when I see it. However, the team persevered and worked hard and made Stewie's design a natural extension to the OpenNMS user's workflow, enabling them to provide better IT services. If I had to pick the key element in Stewie that makes it so powerful, it would be this notion of the focal point. The focal point helps users to navigate topologies that are most interesting to them at the moment they're interested. The current topological context can always be adjusted and enhanced quite quickly by simply adding or changing the set of focal points. Additionally, we created a set of semantics and navigation behaviors that allow the user to work on the topology without losing focus or continuity. A couple of these, as you'll see in the demo, are historical navigation and Google Earth style pan and zoom. These help to maintain the user's understanding of contextual relationships when using Stewie semantic controls to adjust the, and navigate the topology. We've tried hard to provide as much contextual information as possible in order to avoid having the user navigate away from Stewie for more data. Dynamic icon states, tool tips, auto filtering widgets, browser-based modal dialogues, and command slash action windows make STUI a great tool for triage of network management problems. Simply turning an icon red or on a topology map is a basic visualization feature of little value when the network is very large, let alone Internet of Things large. STUI's clever set of semantics paired with the concept and use of focal points make it possible to actually integrate a topology map into the workflow of service problem management. Without these concepts, the topology map is just noise in the way of the NMS user's desire to quickly resolve problems in the network. Okay, let's get on with the demo. Okay, uh, to get started with this demo, first I thought I would do is show you the evolution of maps in OpenNMS. After all, um, how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you've been? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm running 1.12 here, and what I'm going to do is show you the first version of maps that were in OpenNMS. These maps were contributed by a developer in Italy named Antonio Russo, and Antonio is also responsible for um, writing the topology provider in the current maps that we have, as well as, well, if there wasn't any topology to show, um, there wouldn't be any sense in having topology maps. The the link D process uh, Antonio is also responsible for, which does layer two and three discovery for us. So let me get started here. Uh, this is Antonio's contribution, the SVG maps. It's still in 1.12. And I'll start by showing you uh, switching to admin mode here, create a new map. And I'll give it a name. Let's call it US map. And let's put a node. And 
I'll just put in an IP address here of something that I know that's in the topology. 3.0.1 add. There we go. We have a core node. And what I'll do here is I'll add its neighbors. Do that by clicking on the node. There we go. And uh, let's put a background on it since this is a US map. I happen to have an image uh, that comes with 112. Pick that image. Set it. And there we go. Now I can move this node like, hey, I'll drop it there, open NMS Mecca, and perhaps our office in Atlanta, and our office in Texas, and our office out there somewhere in Oregon. But anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, there we go. You see there are some multi-connected nodes there. Lots of hops. There we go. Well, you get the idea. I can now um, save and I can put this in refresh mode which means I'll see status with these little status indicators next to the icon I can also switch them to put the status behind the icon like so okay well I think you kind of get the idea there it's a pretty standard uh, technology for showing topology maps and having a pictorial background that kind of thing but you could imagine if you had hundreds of thousands of nodes or even tens of thousands of nodes how um, how tedious that might get. But you know what? It's a pretty good technology and, and it's available in 112. Let's go look at the new uh, STUI technology in OpenNMS. Um, uh, 112. This was the first version. So right now it's uh, drawing a topology for the entire uh, network. And uh, I can come in here and I see I have a menu bar. Uh, something, uh, these are menu items to control the visual display uh, properties of STUI. And then when a device is selected, you can um, uh, have other uh, menu items here. And then you have a list of all the nodes, and you can also search in here. So let's see, let's just take a look at this node, which uh, coincidentally seems to be the same node that I put in the map uh, previously. And let me turn on this alarm status. So this outer ring here, this blue ring, says that it, the node is selected, and this inner ring here gives you the status color. Now you can see that I don't have any alarms for this node, that's selected, but I can deselect the node by clicking anywhere on the background, and I should get all, the list of all alarms for um, the database. Yeah, there we go. And uh, I can sort these columns as well. These are widgets um, that can be plugged into the topology pretty easily. So yeah, I can uh, um, move things around. I can make multiple selections. Now one of the improvements in, that we have made is uh, in Stewie version 2 is it's a little bit faster, more responsive. But you can see I've made a selection here and it zooms to the selection. There are no nodes here that are um, having uh, any issues. And I can zoom to a node pretty quickly by clicking one in this list and it'll do this Google Earth style pan and zoom. And if there's maybe something, hopefully on the other side of the network here, I'll click and get a little different uh, perspective of how that works. Trying to maintain continuity, show you where things, where you are in the topology. Okay. Um, there are uh, different layouts again, so we can try picking a circle layout. I think that it'll redraw the layout, probably zoom to that node within the circle layout once it's drawn. There you go. And now you see the different menu items are available. These same items are in the pop-up menu. Different things like that. Okay. Click on the background, zoom back out. Let's pick... I don't know if you can hear it, but my machine's getting pretty hot with several VMs running for this demo as well as this topology. And doing all this recording. 
without any further ado, let's take a look at 113. It looks like I left my uh, navigation to be right to the topology, so it's probably going to pull up where I was in history. Yeah, okay. So you can see here this uh, initial topology is uh, a little bit different. We have the icon, uh, an SVG icon spec. Uh, we've used the publicly available Cisco icons, um, uh, standard icons for showing network topology. And uh, what we've done here is we can see that in this uh, new version of STUI, you can see there's a couple of alarms that are in this alarm widget here filters. Instead of showing you all the alarms in the system, it filters to base what's in the context. This current context is based on this focal point. And this focal point here, I can zoom to it from here. Or I could come over here and click what I call uh, the magic eye and dim everything that's not in focus. And the idea of the focal point is to, and I can click this, you know, show me the entire network um, tool there, is to show you the nodes that are a certain number of hops away from the focal point. So we can see here, we have one hop away from the focal point. A little heads up display here to show you have one node in focus, uh, one vertice, so to speak. Um, nothing selected. Within this context, there are 76 nodes out of a total of 713 uh, vertices and 478 edges. Okay. All right. Well, if I remove something from focus, the map has nothing to show, so it'll give you a little warning. You can click this show default focus again, and it'll bring us right back where we were. And if you remember a little bit ago, um, we were looking at this node. I can add that node to the focus. And now if I say the magic eye, see I have these two routers that are in focus and everything one hop away from the two focal points. So one hop away from this core router and one hop away from this other router. Okay, I can increase the semantics around this by saying show me two hops away. And now if I reveal the focal points, see we redrawn the map, right? And we've used this uh, FR layout and we still have these two focal points. If I, and we have 224 nodes uh, in the context. Go up one more semantic level here, redraw. It looks like we've pretty much added everything that has a relationship to these two focal points. So I'll just move it back to there. Okay. And uh, we do have a couple of more alarms that have shown up. So let me uh, remove these focal points. Looks like everything was connected to core there. And come back to the home page and show you a quick interaction with how uh, having nodes in focus uh, really helped you get, get work done here. So I need to bring up a terminal window, log into my VM. Let me make this a little smaller. And 13, uh, screencast. All right. And I'm going to run a script here that will take down, uh, create an outage, and we'll see how that all works with the with the workflow. So let's give me 75 seconds to uh, <laughs> don't know my own script. There we go. All right, let's wait, wait for the screen to refresh, and you can see I've got this screen refreshing pretty quickly. I've also replaced the RTC console with a surveillance view, something that you can do in 112. I'm sorry, one. 13 and uh, it's keyed for the user that's logged in which is a nice feature so we will click on this alarm I see that there's a journal note from before that says the last time this happened the CEO plugged his espresso machine into the server room UPS ah I'll take this one all right so I got I got this need a little coffee today. All right, let's save there, save this little note. Again, you can see the journal memo there. I'm gonna acknowledge this. 
And if I come back to the home page, you see there's no pending problems, even though I still have this outage. Well, if I click on the node here from the outages list, you can see pretty quickly here that I have some outages and it looks like everything is down on this one interface. Yep, there we go. Interface down. Well, let's go view this. I could view this right now from here, go to the topology, but just to show you that we do have a geographical map, which is also pretty cool. Um, I'll click on geographical map and then we'll go from there to topology. All right, well, this node happens to be right there in the heart of our nation's capital. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, probably not, but anyway, uh, I'm going to go here. And now I can click on topology. Show in topology. Now I've set this focal point to be this node ID. And you can see that the topology is showing me now that I do have another outage. And I have a node down. Well, if I went to the home page, so let's see, yep, there's this current pending problems list. Let me go back to topology and see that topology has remembered where I was and what I had done even the layout and let's see yeah let me increase the view of the topology by adding this node that has a problem to focus now you can see just with a quick um, change in the semantics there I can add more nodes to the context and I can see that I have a bunch of nodes down here if I wanted to see if there were other nodes that were affected by this outage but not maybe related to that one i would go ahead and increase the zoom level which the semantic zoom when uh, stewie v2 is about hops all right so from the focal point two hops away it looks like this is the only segment that's affected by that outage okay well just to show you uh, as part of this demo I'm going to clear, oh, I'm going to acknowledge, yeah, there we go. And somebody else is working on this other segment because they've acknowledged those problems. And now you can see because the little badges went away that there are no longer any outstanding outages or outstanding problems that need to be worked on. But I still have the problem, they're just, they're being addressed. Okay, well, what happens when it gets cleared? There we go. And as you can see, these have been, all been cleared. Now this widget seems a little out of sync, so I am going to go ahead and tell it to refresh. And there you go. We see that these problems that were here before were cleared by these uh, events that are uh, the clearing events. All right, and then just clean up as alarms normally do in OpenNMS, uh, will perish over a little bit of time. I can hit refresh. That workflow is pretty complete. We're back to the, the little set, the, the set of alarms that we had before. Now let's take a look at what it looks like when it goes down while we're looking at topology. Just happened to be <laughs> in focus at the moment that this goes down. And here we go. Yeah, so if I click here, I've selected this node. I can zoom in. I have a couple things I can do here. I can move this around and I can, I can also say, let's select all these nodes with this little marching ant style selection tool. Looks like I missed a couple there. And uh, I think I can add them. Maybe I'm hitting the wrong key there. Add them to the selection, and I can say here select all and acknowledge. And you'll see the badges go away there. Oh, let's say I did miss another one. What's interesting here is I can right click and I can say get the events and alarms. Come over here to the alarms. It's, fil it's filtered for that node. 
I can come here and I can say go on this acknowledgement. I can also click, just simply click right here. And I could have acknowledged that there. Okay. Yeah, so there's just a quick uh, demo of the OpenNMS Stewie. I hope you like it. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you think.